Welcome to worship at San Ramon Valley United Methodist Church. I'm Pastor Kim Reisdorf, and I'm so grateful you are here worshiping with us in person, online, on Sunday, any day. Worship happens whenever we open ourselves up to an experience of God, divine love, right here with us. And so we worship together. We're in the middle of a sermon series called, Are You Looking for a Meaningful Faith in a Modern World? And when we began to plan today's service, we picked a theme, which would be awe, that feeling that of being in the vastness of God's presence that transforms how we see the world. Living with awe is a way to have a meaningful faith. But then this week, some awful things happened. A rampage of mass shootings, not only in California, but in Austin and last night in Baltimore, where a two-year-old was shot in the face. We also heard more details about the brutal beating of Tyree Nichols at the hands of police officers. And we also learned brutal details about living conditions for farm workers in Half Moon Bay. So how is it that we can proclaim praise or awe and know that there are awful things that are happening in the world? That's the question we'll focus on. And we'll start that exploration with our opening hymn that, yes, invites us to praise God, but also acknowledges that there is despair and grief. And we bring all of that to worship as we begin with singing. So stand, sit, sing, listen, tap your toes. It's how we worship. Let us do it. It's a day, a week, a time when we have to ask, how do we praise God and not close our eyes to the awful things, the violence and hatred and injustice in the world? Have I got a book for you? 
Right in the center of scripture is a book called Psalms. Those songs are written to be used to be the centerpiece of worship. And Psalms have both praise and awe, but also acknowledge the full range of human emotions, be it rage, despair, hopelessness, distrust, grief, as if to say, every human emotion, every human experience, there's room for that in worship. We bring our whole selves to this time, whether it be praise or rage, whether it be love for God or wondering where God is. We praise God even as we wait for God. And that's the tension that we hold in for a meaningful faith. So we'll start with praise for God. You'll hear that in the psalm we're about to read. Hear today's scripture reading from the book of Psalm. Release your heart's joy in sweet music to the eternal when the upright passionately sing glory-filled songs to him, everything is in its right place. Worship the eternal with your instruments, strings offering their praise. Write awe-filled songs to him on the ten-stringed harp. Sing to him a new song. Play each the best way you can, and don't be afraid to be bold with your joyful feelings. For the word of the eternal is perfect and true. His actions are always faithful and right. He loves virtue and equity. The eternal's love fills the whole earth. Let all people stand in awe of the eternal. Let every man, woman, and child live in wonder of him. Listen, the eyes of the eternal is upon those who live in awe of him, those who hope in his steadfast love that he may save them from the darkness of the grave and be kept alive during the lean seasons. We live with hope in the eternal. We wait for him, for he is our divine help and impenetrable shield. Our hearts erupt with joy in him because we trust his holy name. O oh, eternal, drench us with your endless love, even now as we wait for you. With, with delight, we hear what the Lord says. This prayer written by Steve Garnis Holmes seems like a perfect one for this setting. Join me in a moment of prayer. God of mercy, open our eyes to your goodness. Open our eyes to the other stuff, too. Keep us aware of the injustice that is around us, the signs of oppression, the victims of hate. Keep us always mindful that we are capable of evil. Help us to be honest about our complicity in systems that blame, exploit, dehumanize, or exclude people. Help us be aware of the present moment and how we can stand today with the vulnerable and against injustice. Each moment is a choice. Be with us in our choosing. Amen. My whole life long, I've collected ironies. You would too, if you grew up in the small upstate New York town that I grew up in. There was a chiropractor in town, and his name? Dr. Tripp. I know. I learned irony at an early age. But it gets even better. There was one local travel agency in town as well. It was owned by a husband and wife team. And uh, they, the name of their business was their two surnames, which was Muddle and Muddle. <laughs> <laughs> what can I say? I grew up aware of irony. And I'm aware that the uh, English language sometimes delights 
in irony. There's a word for that. It's called contronyms. There are words in the English language that simultaneously mean two things, like bound, going somewhere, or restrained from moving, or buckle, to fasten together, or to bend from pressure. Cleave, to adhere firmly, or to split apart. Irony is a part of life. It's something we learn to live with. But there is nauseating irony in the fact that Tyree, Tyree Nichols died at the hands of officers who were part of a special unit. That special unit was there to bring peace to the street. I don't know what to say about the awfulness that, that was part of his death the awfulness of gun violence. I know there is a temptation, a tendency to be overwhelmed, to feel hopeless, to feel powerless in the face of awfulness. But we are not powerless. We can take meaningful actions of faith. We can do that because the power of God's presence makes that possible. We cannot claim that we are people of faith if we are silent when we see evil, when we see the awful. How, do, how then do we go forward? What does an authentic faith look like when there is evil in systems, in gun violence, in excessive brutality, in two-year-olds getting shot? I'm not going to list any more things. You know that awful exists. What is the way forward? in a meaningful journey of faith in this modern world. We are not powerless. We can choose what we're going to live with and what we're not going to live with. And we can choose to take one step at a time towards invoking God's presence and having it work through us. What are the steps towards doing that? It goes back to our theme today, which is awe. Awe is the experience of the vastness of God's presence transforming how we see the world. If we're looking for a way to make a difference, we have to move from hopelessness and powerlessness to being aware that in the midst of the awful is the opportunity to practice awe, to be aware that God's presence is with us. Like in the book of Psalms, the awful and the sense of awe exist side by side. The psalmist was a realist on how to go forward in faith. So today, today we look at, at the practice of all awe and how to cultivate that feeling. You all know when you feel it, but it's hard to put into words. Awe is that moment when uh, the world is so much bigger than what you could imagine. It could be from beautiful music. It could be, I was at a clergy uh, gathering this week and we walked down, as we heard some of the awful news this week, we walked down to watch the sunset on the beach. Something about watching a sunset transports us to a bigger awareness. Or I, was, was, uh, I spent some time with a first time grandfather who had lots of videos. <laughs> but one of the videos was of this tiny little Buddha baby um, chuckling and chortling and it was just so contagious in all his roundness. He just sat there and, and chortled and laughed and chuckled. It was a moment of awe. The good news about awe is it's accessible to everyone. You were created by your creator with the capacity to be full of awe, part of that awareness of God at work. And that word awe has become the new darling, the new focus of many mental health um, professionals as well as researchers. We're learning a lot about awe and how necessary it is for our well-being. Awe can tap down um, stress. It can reduce the tension in your nervous system. It can increase acts of kindness and generosity and strengthen the connection between people. I want to list those benefits of awe again because isn't that what we yearn for? when we hear news of gun mass shootings or violence or hatred, we want ways to reduce stress. We want ways to increase generosity and kindness. 
We want ways to deepen the connection between people. And so it starts with us. To practice awe is one way to powerfully address the awful. Because when we situate ourselves in the awareness of God again and again and again, we get a glimpse of the next step, a way forward, a way to be, what to commit to as we address the evil in the world. Certainly, if we were going to summarize what Jesus did, he addressed suffering and injustice in the world. And there's still work to do. He did not finish getting rid of all the evil and suffering and pain and hunger in the world. And so his followers, and all true followers of a faith-filled way of living, are commissioned to go forward and bring the good news, one step, one day at a time. How do we cultivate awe? Researchers and mental health professionals now have a list to help us do that. One is to slow it down. You can't experience awe if you're going at 90 miles an hour. To slow it down, to linger, that's one way. Or to just walk outside, day or night, and look up, to take a walk in nature. There's another one that caught my attention, and we're going to do that this week. You know that I was a professor before I was a uh, um, pastor, so I like giving assignments. Um, as we have these little booklets. They're called an awe journal. If you're worshiping here with us in person, yours is there in the back to pick up as you leave. If you live locally but are, are live streaming or watch, watching online, you can pick this up at the church office. And if you live outside of this geographical area, if you help us get your address, we would be delighted to put one in an envelope and mail it to you. Our assignment this week is to write down the little things that bring us awe, and every day to write down something. We have an opportunity to become aware of the power of awe so that we can be the power of God that is so needed. We are a faith community that says worship is more than a noun. It's a verb. And it becomes a verb when we take this cultivation of awe and we practice it and then we move forward to address the evil. We're not powerless. We're not helpless. We are people who worship God. And that's where our next piece of music leads us.
Just about 20 years ago, during a dark time in my life when I was more aware of the awful than the practice of awe, a pastor from this church, Deborah Brady, asked me to consider meeting with a Stephen minister. And I'm so glad I said yes. My Stephen minister visited me at my home once a week for about an hour. She listened, she prayed, she didn't try to fix things, she didn't try to give me advice. She walked alongside me, and it made such a powerful difference in my life that I have become a lifelong, unabashed advocate for Stephen ministry. And so today, I am so grateful that we get to commission new Stephen ministers, and I invite the Stephen leaders, any active Stephen ministers, to come forward or to stand, and then the, those being commissioned today as newly minted Stephen ministers to join us up here as well. Stephen ministers uh, go through, uh, receive 50 hours of training, and then they have ongoing um, meetings twice a month where they learn, they continue to learn, but they continue to hold each other accountable. Um, so as we gather here today, I uh, want to thank our Stephen leaders who make these classes possible, and we will... Um, proceed with the commissioning, which involves some questions for the new ministers and then uh, for the uh, congregation as well. Stephen ministers, you are a gift from God to us. Will you assume this ministry with the confidence that comes from God? If so, say I will and ask God to help me. Stephen ministers, uh, will you nurture the skills you have learned and use them in service to others to support, encourage, and walk alongside people in their needs? If so, say, I will, and ask God to help me. Church community, will you pray for and encourage these people in their ministry as Stephen ministers? When you need a Stephen minister to walk alongside you, will you be open to this opportunity? If so, say with enthusiasm, yes, with God's help, we will. Yes, with God's help, we will. Amen, amen. Al, do you want to introduce our new Stephen ministers and then we will commission? Certainly. Uh, so we're welcoming today as Stephen ministers, Claudia Artiga. Warren Cancel, and Lindsay Haraska. Great. And Claudia, we'll start with you. If you would kneel here, and then we will gather around and lay hands on Claudia as we hear this blessing. Claudia, may the God of love fill you with the Holy Spirit so that you may be faithful in the ministry to which you have been called, gifted, and sent. Amen. Warren. Warren. May the God of love fill you with the Holy Spirit so that you may be faithful in the ministry to which you have been called, gifted, and sent. Amen. Lindsay. Lindsay. May the God of love fill you with the Holy Spirit so that you may be faithful in the ministry to which you have been called, gifted, and sent. Amen. Amen. Thank you, San Ramon Valley United Methodist Church, for being a community that supports the Stephen ministry. And thank you all for saying yes and for uh, providing these opportunities. We'll be around if you would like to learn more about the program in any way. Um, all these people will be around. But right now, we'll return to our seats. Amen. One of those awe-inspiring moments this mo today and for this week, and I'm always in awe of the work that we do, whether it's through Stephen Ministry or whether it's also through our disaster response ministry as well. And as we offer our gifts and our t offerings today, one of the ways that we can support 
our ministry is through our continuing work with disaster recovery. On Sunday, February 12th, after worship, we're going to be gathering after church to assemble cleaning buckets used in response to flood and fires. All are welcome to put the buckets together, and there will be a job for everyone. We also invite you to make a donation to cover these buckets, in which we have several different ways to give, in addition to our regular tithes and offerings. If you're here in person, we have offering plates in the back as you leave. If you're joining us online, you can hover your camera phone over the QR code, or even in here, or you could go to our website, srvumc.org slash give, and it'll give you the options to give to the disaster recovery, to give to our general offering, and whatever we do, and whatever we give, let us do so with a joyful heart, and let us do with awe in our hearts. God, 
Of all blessings, your beloved son teaches all we need to know to claim the life you've hoped for us. In spite of that, we live like the rest of the world that is eager to accumulate and reluctant to give. Today, we bring to you our gifts, which are the result of your blessings. Help us to remember the unsheltered, the poor, and the powerless, who Jesus called truly blessed. We pray in the name of our teacher and savior, amen. One of the ways that we can live a meaningful faith in a modern world is through the power of prayer. And so as we lift up the following prayers that we are aware of for this week, I invite you to join me in a spirit of prayer. Our loving and holy God, we come to you today with so many things going on, so many things happening in this world. So many things happening among our church family and beyond. Today we lift up prayers for Priscilla Wolfram's cousin Ellen, who is going through treatment for cancer. We pray for all of those who are living with cancer, that they may all feel held in God's tender, powerful care. We lift up Joyce Kaiser, as she is now receiving hospice care. As we lift up prayers for peace for her and for her family during this time. We lift up prayers of hope and encouragement for Ida Dandridge as she seeks a new job. We continue lifting up our world, our nation, our state, and our community. We lift up especially all of those who have been affected by all of the mass shootings that have happened this past week. We pray for the family of Tyree Nichols. We pray for an end to violence. We pray for peace throughout our world. We pray for all of those who are going through health challenges. We pray for those who are grieving and continue to grieve. We pray traveling mercies for those who are traveling. And we pray for our church here locally and for the church universal. And so as we give all of these prayers into your hands, O oh God, let us join with the disciples from generation to generation and with the confidence of the children of God let us join together in the prayer that Jesus taught us as we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive those who trespass, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I'm gonna sing when the Spirit says sing. I'm gonna sing when the Spirit says sing. Sing when the Spirit says sing and obey the Spirit of the Lord. I'm gonna pray when the Spirit says pray. I'm gonna pray when the Spirit says pray. I'm gonna pray when the Spirit says pray and obey the Spirit of the The decision that we make this week to cultivate awe is just not just so that we will feel good or peace or awareness. It's so that we will go into the world to address what needs to be addressed, to address where suffering and evil exist. 
So with that in mind, every worship service includes opportunities that you are invited to be a part of. Our Dialogue for Change group will continue to meet for the next few weeks, and they meet right after uh, about 11.15 on a Sunday morning, both online on Zoom. You can find that Zoom link uh, uh, on our website, or you can join us in person in the Fireside Room. And we have a guest speaker today. Uh, she brings a vibrant faith and a deep commitment to her journey as a gay, man, a gay woman in the Christian church. She'll focus on what it means to be increasingly wel a welcoming and inclusive congregation. What does it mean to say that we welcome all? And so we, we gather to uh, be both challenged and invited to deepen our awareness of what it means to be a reconciling congregation. And as Andrew mentioned earlier, we will gather in two weeks. Uh, it'll be on the 12th, uh, right after worship, February 12th, to assemble the buckets. We've had a team of wonderful people that got all the ingredients. These cleaning buckets are taken to places where there have been floods or fires. They have ingredients that allow people to clean up and stay safe in, in the midst of that. So what better way to move into Valentine's Day than, by, than to be doing this act of love together after worship on February 12th. And as Andrew said, if you go to our Give page on our website, there is a line item if you want to give to support getting those ingredients ready um, to be in those buckets. So we'll, there's many ways to participate and make a difference. And now I invite the chair of our Staff Parish Relations Committee, Bill Fulcher, to come to the mic and um, update us on leadership in this community. I always get a sense of trepidation coming from you all when I step to the microphone. There's this kind of like, oh gosh, now what? Uh, but I stand here today excited on behalf of the Staff Parish Relations Committee to read to you a message to our congregation from our district superintendent, Reverend Samuel Hong. Dear members and friends of San Ramon Valley United Methodist Church, peace of Jesus Christ be with you. After prayerful consideration, the Bishop of the California Nevada Annual Conference, in consultation with the Cabinet, has discerned a new pastor, Reverend Samuel S. Yun, to serve your church as senior pastor, effective July 1, 2023. Pastor Samuel is an exceptional preacher who not only inspires and encourages people, but also graciously challenges them to follow the teachings of Jesus Christ. He is a visionary leader and at the same time well-organized pastor who is capable of leading the San Ramon Valley community to a higher ground that God intends you to reach. Most of all, he is a well-rounded pastor who has proven his effectiveness as a pastoral leader. For the past 28 years, he has faithfully served God's church in various capacities. To name a few, he pastored three churches as senior or solo pastor. He worked as an associate pastor for two large churches. He started a new church from the scratch. He directed camp and retreat ministries at the conference level. He guest preached across the country in various contexts. He participated in Path One Strategy Team for Discipleship Ministries, whose focus is on developing strategies for starting new communities of faith. And he currently chairs the core team of the California Nevada Annual Conference. I'm exhausted just going through all that. <laughs> Back to the message. Under his great leadership, I trust that San Ramon Valley United Methodist Church will get stronger in all aspects of life as we strive to alter our community goal as a church, making disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. In this important time of transformation, transition, I ask you to pray for Pastor Samuel I trust you will welcome and support him wholeheartedly. I also ask you to pray for Pastor Kim and her husband, Steve, who will soon transition into a different stage of life. God will help us move forward through this pastoral change. Blessings, Reverend Samuel Hong. 
This is good news, San Ramon Valley United Methodist Church. You know, from my own perspective, I, I do want to thank the Staff Parish Relations Committee. They were so clear and organized, saying what we needed, what we yearned for in pastoral leadership, and the cabinet listened. And we can tick off everything that was on the list there. And for me personally, as we waited to hear who would get to serve here, it reminded me of the time when my kids were munchkins, and it was uh, before there was a lot of online activity and finding out who their elementary school teachers would be. So with great anticipation, with a mix of nervousness, you would wait in line until you got to that table and you would be given a card and you'd find out who your kid's teacher was that year. It was a similar mix of emotions as we waited to hear, because when you're waiting to hear who your teacher is gonna be for your kid, you want a good teacher and experience, you, more than that, you want the best teacher in the universe for your particular kid. And that's what you got with Pastor Sam. You have someone with the heart of a pastor, the experience in so many ways, and he is so looking forward to being a part of this community. Um, there is a lot to there is a lot to celebrate. And so we stand and we sing, well, we will go forth for God and we will welcome Pastor Sam as the next lead pastor on July 1st. Let us sing. <laughs> to cultivate awe so that we can be the people that address suffering and pain and injustice in the world. And as we go forward, hear the words of William Sloan Coffin. May God bless you and keep you and be gracious unto you. May God grant you the grace to never sell yourself or God short. The grace to risk something big for something good. Grace to know the world is too dangerous for anything but truth and too small for anything but love. So may God take your mind and think through it. May God take your lips and speak through them. May God take your heart and set it on fire. Go forward together 
to be the presence of God alive in our world. Amen.